Okay, here's where we're at on the the rear end swap project. Uh, as you can see, the rear end is hanging from the springs. And everything looks like where it's at, it'll work. I was thinking maybe I needed to get a taller jack so I could jack it up a little more. I've got the jack stands not as high as they can go. I just got it as high as I could jack it up. And it looks like it's going to be enough. Let's just show this a little. This will still go down all the way there. So as you can see, I can still drop the, the drive shaft about three or four inches, which will give me some plenty of room to get under everything. The only thing it's going to hit is these mud flaps, which are rubber. It's no big deal. This is going to just come right out. It's pretty obvious. Uh, I'm not getting in any hurry because the rear end at the junkyard won't be ready for uh, at least another 10 days, maybe 11, maybe, you know, they'll call me when they got it out. Uh, once I get this out on the ground, maybe I could get the spider gears to go back in and some things. Spider gears, maybe you don't know what the heck I'm talking about. Let's get them and take a look. These are the spider gears. They fall out when you try to work on it. They look like that. And they've got little bearings that they float on, so to speak. And uh, when you turn one wheel and the other one goes the opposite direction, that's what's doing it is these gears. And they look they don't look bad to me. You see the numbers on them and everything. This is the pin that came out. And the pin that holds the pin in this. Everything looks fine. Not real bad wear or anything on it. Doesn't look bad. Just something in there is not spaced right to where I can't get them back in. Now there's somebody out there that knows what to do. A specialist, a special mechanic that works on rear ends. There's one south of here and maybe I'll hook up with him and have him rebuild this. Uh, on the, the left side, the driver's side axle has broken shims, and that's making it where I gave up on working on it because I couldn't get the axle out. I thought it had a bad axle. It turns out it's other things. Uh, I misdiagnosed. Took it apart trying to get the axle off. It couldn't. So the solution at that point was just get another rear end, which you know, $250. It's actually about the same as getting another axle. There's two axles in a rear end, one on each side. I'm learning a lot about this whole stuff. I, I didn't know what was inside one of the differentials at all. Had no clue. Well, now I know. Pretty uh, precise assembly. You're not just going to slap one together and have it work. Uh, it's very specialized tools and everything involved with, with that. 
Uh, you're gonna use gauges and stuff like that that are you know, machinist type tools. To where I'm not set up for that. My mind isn't set up for that either. I'm a carpenter, a framing carpenter, an eighth of an inch is close enough kind of guy. Uh, no way should I be messing around with machinist type of work. My mind just isn't set up for that. Well, what's holding this all together? Just two U-bolts. I don't know if you can see them, but on the passenger side, there's one on the inner, and on the driver's side, there's one on the outer. Those are just the ones that came off first, or last, rather. Uh, had to use a blowtorch and heat them up. They're actually ready to come off. All I got to do is just zip, 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 and now I'll be on the ground. I'm excited, and I just want to do it, but I think I better be very cautious at this stage and get a helper at least to steady the thing and help push it out. And once we got it out here, I'll be feeling a lot better. I've got a place cleared right out here in front, or behind the truck, rather. Just to where them spider gears are sitting. We could pull that axle out and just have it sitting here. Then I'll bring the trailer and load it into the trailer after I get the brake pieces off. I'd still like to get more of the brake stuff off of those that old axle before I get it out of here. I'd like to get the emergency brake pads off. I did it basically all the way to where I know what I'm doing when the next one comes. Because if I tear it apart on this one, it's no big deal, see? But the one that's coming, I gotta be able to, you know, make it work. I got a feeling all I'm gonna end up doing is pulling the rotors and then I'll check and look. Maybe clean up the emergency brakes that are on it. Maybe they're fine. And I could just hook up my cables to that. Well, that would save me a lot of work. Then I could put my new rotors on, new calipers, new pads, and basically have new rear brakes. I think I, I'm gonna need a new brake line. But other than that, so far, no real issues. It's went amazingly smooth. I just kept getting lucky about stuff. But one thing that gave me a lot of trouble was hooking up the, or unhooking, disconnecting the main brake line. I couldn't figure it out how it comes apart because it was so rusty. Then I spotted the clip. I started banging on the clip with a screwdriver and a hammer and it popped off. But then everything was still stuck. I couldn't get it apart. Uh, I, I bent it one way thinking I would just bend the bracket back and forth and snap it off and then weld it back on later. It bent one way and I couldn't get it to bend back so I got my hammer, started hammering on it and then the brake line popped out. <laughs> uh, so I bent the flange back to where it goes and everything's gonna be fine when I get everything reassembled. And it's gonna go back and I'll be able to reuse the clip and everything. It's gonna be pretty much as it was. I'm a little excited. Just hope nothing goes wrong. You know, what could possibly go wrong? Eventually I will uh, try to put the spider gears back in and if not, I'll just tape them onto the axle or something and send it down the road to whoever else can do it. I might just take it back to the junkyard as a core and get 50 bucks for it, but hey, for 50 bucks, I'll just hang on to the damn thing. You never know, I might be able to get it rebuilt for, you know, not that much. We'll just have to wait and see, you know. You can try to get in a hurry at these things and the world will fight you. Just 
the more patience you have, the easier it is, really. I, I When this first went south, I tried to get it into the shop. They wanted two weeks just to look at it. And I was like, well, by then I could maybe figure out what's wrong with it and fix it. And, and plus, it just scared the hell out of me of turning it over to some guy that wants to rack up a bill because you know they're hungry. And they really don't want to do major repairs these days, it seems like. It's, I, I get it. I was a small business. My specialty was fences and decks and jobs I could do real quick and have over within a week or less. I was always on the lookout for jobs that were quick. Didn't you know the pay didn't have to be high? I just wanted to get out of my hair as quickly as possible. The last thing I wanted to do was take a job all summer long working on somebody's complete remodel of their home where they keep changing their mind about things. Uh, I've been there, done that, and it's really not a happy place. It is for whoever's making all the decisions because you know they get to play home designer. I've been in some really weird weird places like that too. Once we were doing this house with the lady picked all this mint green paint scheme. That house was minty. I'll tell you what, when you walked in you felt a little shiver because it was cool. It was, the psychological power of that color was strong. You like shiver when you walked into this mint green room. <laughs> it, it's hard to describe but it was real and you'd almost smell it too you know it's just like powerful powerful I imagine our government probably knows about this stuff too that's why they got that awful government green color <laughs> well back to the rear end I got off sidetrack there it happens pretty random. Let's take a closer look here. I'd like to get these little bus shields and stuff off. That means I gotta take all the brakes off. I'm not sure I want to dig that deep. I think just getting to where I'm at here would be fine on the other axle, unless something's really obviously torn up. Emergency brakes, big deal if they work or not. I hope they kind of work. I think I'll just get brake cleaner and clean up the old brakes. If they look anything like what I got, they'll be fine. But putting the, the actual new calipers, new rotors, new pads, and have it, you know, new brake line and stuff don't sound too bad the brake parts ain't cheap it's gonna cost more than the rear end but hey old trucks need new brakes occasionally this is gonna be at least halfway decent once I get it going I'm, I'm hoping it runs real well the engine runs great I just put new u-joints in the drive shaft the front drive shaft needs a little work too and I might need to do some front end work, but it's not, you know, making it inoperable. The front differential has a leak on one side, by the output seal. I don't know what it's called, but on one side it obviously has leaked. I have to do some work on up there too. But first things first, let's get the rear end going. So they can get it out of the shed. No, I didn't have that dent in the bumper until somewhat recently. I backed into a tree in the yard, messing around with the bees. I knew I was going to hit it eventually, and then thunk, I hit the dang thing. It's a pear, a pear tree over by the beehives. Oops. Well, at least the bumper did what it's supposed to do. Kept me from uh, needing a new tailgate. And, turn signal and all that. 
Ramble, ramble, been on and on, 15 minutes just sitting here looking at the truck. Well, I don't want to get in a hurry, but I just wanted to show how, yeah, we, we could probably drop it about four inches lower still, which is plenty, and get it off. Maybe tonight. I don't know, I might wait until this weekend. I might just wait until they call with the other rear end. Uh, at first I was in a big hurry because I thought I was under the under pressure well once I got a blowtorch uh, it took the pressure off do a little cleaning here then I'm gonna leave that these can oh, here it is. Here's a little baggie that these go in. So I just stick them in here and not get them all scratched up. And then I've got the glasses, the striker, the extra other tip. Everything I need is in here. The, the gas is turned off. The, gas has been drained from the lines. Just put this up. I'm going to slide the bow of my boat over so I can fit back there. The shed is tightly packed full of stuff. Three table saws, and just yard equipment, a chipper shredder, a rake thing. Just a ton of stuff in here. Some of it I actually use. The wagon to the mower. A lot of my tools. It took me about a couple of days of all the tools here just to get where I got everything I need. That's what I came over here to do today is just clean up, clean up the workspace a little.
here for now. This is pretty much all the stuff I use to take it off. I can need the same things to put it back. Here's my diff cover and bolts. I'll try at least to get that on eventually. Uh, well, this is so close I can taste it. But I'm kind of afraid to go a little further alone. Without at least somebody here to call 911 or something, you know. Better safe than sorry. Keeping it real. Uh, you might notice these straps. They're kind of tied off to the side. There's two at the front of the truck as well. I had those for hanging my boat. I had my boat suspended off the trusses up here so that I could uh, take it. I had to weld the trailer and do some work to the, the trailer bunks. I, I bought a welder and welded it. And then I reattached the bunks. And it's all good. I've had a lot of projects like this this year. First I had the trailer, I bought the welder, did all that. Then I started noticing the truck making noises. It's been quite a ride, and I sure hope this has a happy ending. Uh, we'll see. One way or another, I'm going to make it a happy ending. I don't know if you've had a 2007 Dodge Ram with a hit 5.7 Hemi. It's pretty nice. It's kind of fun to drive. You get the right tires on it. And it's pretty stable. Uh, I really love this truck. So fixing it is kind of a labor of love. It's not like I hate it or anything. It's fun driving this truck, actually. I had a Toyota that was a lot of fun to drive. I had an Explorer that was, yeah, okay. I didn't really love it or anything. I've had a lot of trucks. But this one I really, really like. And you know, there's no guarantee just buying another one and you're gonna like it as much. Uh, there's something to like about every, or something to not like about everything these days. It's just pretty wild. Well, this is 25 minutes long of me rambling in a garage. Uh, have a great day, everybody. God bless you. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.